Good morning everyone, how are you? I hope that you're doing okay. Right, today I'm going through all my flower seeds uh, to figure out what I'm going to be growing for the year. So out of my seed box that I showed you in my previous video, we have three boxes that's full of uh, flower seeds. So I've got one for sweet peas, I don't know why it's just the one quite a few in there and then the other two have got all my other flower seeds so I'm going to be going through them I had intended to put this video out uh probably about a week ago so sorry but then the holidays started and the kids are at home so there's not really much chance but yeah today's video is following on from the previous one I showed you all of my food and veggies and stuff like that that I wanted to grow um so yeah this one is going to be about all of the flowers that I want to be sowing this year because as of today it is the 1st of January so let's go so I'm going to start off um, straight over with the nasturtiums now nasturtiums I grew a lot of last year some of them I had a lot of success with the ones that I just planted randomly around the garden but the ones that I had in pots didn't do so well I think it's because I planted them just by themselves so they kind of didn't do very well but these are the varieties that I'm going to be growing this year I need to make sure I don't get confused so the first one is uh, where are we here it's called summer carousel and I got these from Wilco's I don't know how much the seeds cost because I have ripped the packet open these are lovely pink and yellow but what I did find was I didn't really get much of the pinks from this pack it could just be that the ones that I picked out were just the yellow ones I got mostly yellow but they are really really nice they are like a kind of like a a butter kind of color sorry it keeps going out of focus so summer carousel is the first variety of nasturtiums that I'm going to be growing this is not a trailing variety but it did sort of trail along the floor a little bit carousel my writing is not very neat then i've got this one my mum gave me this pack but i didn't do well with it last year the seeds didn't germinate there are still some seeds in there so i will kind of sow the rest of them oh they're coming out of the pack as well now. <laughs> and put them back in Make sure I close that properly but this one is called tip top velvet and this is supposed to be a trailing variety as well and a hardy version of nasturtiums but they just didn't do so well for me but I'm going to like I said try them again and then the other variety I've got here is called uh, that will need to be put back in the pack jewels mixed and we did really good on this one there we go and this one is from seed parade but you can get them from anywhere but this is just where I got mine from And then my other variety that I've got absolutely bags and bags of seeds for uh, is from Lidl. These ones are from Lidl and they are just called a trailing mix. And all of these particular seeds are the ones that I saved from last year's growing. So I don't have the pack to show you, but if you do go to Lidl, when they get all their seeds out, they have plenty of these. And then what I did was just dry the seeds out in a tray. And now they're all ready for sowing you can just scatter them you don't need to do anything special when it comes to nasturtiums all you've got to do is just chuck them in the ground or in the pot and they'll grow they don't even need nutritious soil they don't need a very special compost mix if anything the poorer the soil the better that they do um, so I'm just for these ones any seeds that I've saved from the garden I'm just going to put them as saved seeds because if I go around sowing all of these looking through my seed boxes and then I forget all of the other ones that I've got put to the side uh, I'm gonna be pretty annoyed with myself <laughs> all that work saving the seeds and then I forgot to sow them now my next two um, varieties that I've got here are zinnias I thought I had a lot more zinnia seeds but then I've realized the ones that I want to get are from Lidl, so I've, I've got to wait for the seeds to come out. But these two I purchased from Mr. Father Gills, so this is the first one. And this is a giant double mix. I've not grown this before, so I'm really looking forward to it. They actually look a bit like dahlias. You see that? They look like dahlias. I hope the colouring and everything is coming up fine on the camera. I don't know, it looks a bit odd to me. And then the other variety is again 
from Mr. Fothergills and this one is Maryland Marylandica but it's basically they're quite popular they're the the cut the green ones it's like a really nice lime green it says here so that's what I really like to grow um and I bought all of these when they had a one pound sale on all their seeds but the rest I will be getting from Lidl so it's Fothergills Mr. Fothergills and uh Lidl Next we have Cosmos. I didn't do too well on Cosmos either. I sold a couple of, I, I kind of direct sold some seeds because I tried sowing them in trays. They didn't do well. And so then I just scattered the rest of the seeds in the garden and they actually grew. They grew well, but the chicken scratched them out. So I'm going to need to sort out a different situation for my Cosmos. So the first one, this is uh, Mr. Father Gills again. The first one you can see is Sensation Pinky. if anybody's wanting to order that one and then these are some seeds that I actually got sent in uh, the post I can't recall who sent it to me I can't remember who sent it to me her name is oh I don't know I'll put it in the description I can't remember um, but she sent me some seeds in a seed swap and these are a dwarf series Apollo mix um, again I've never grown this before but I'm really looking forward to growing it they've got crimson pink and white seeds in them haven't gone big on the Cosmos this year. I know a lot of people do grow Cosmos. They're very, very popular. Um, but yeah, um, I found that I've really taken to, you know, some of the seeds um, last year that I guess not a lot of people do grow really. They like to grow things like dahlias, Cosmos, all of that sort of stuff. I've kind of gone a little bit more simple with my seed choices this year. All right, the next... Um, flowers that I've got are some foxglove which again I've tried sowing them a few different ways I've tried sowing them individually into seed trays I've tried scattering the seeds and I've just, I'm going to be honest I, I don't have much success with them but I'm still trying so these two varieties I've got here are I've changed pens as well because I've put my pen down somewhere and I don't know where I've put it. I've, um, are the apricot variety and the native variety. So the apricot is is it is what it is. It's a really beautiful apricot shade, and the native variety are the ones that you see when you're driving along the side of the motorway in fields, things like that. It's the shocking pink, and I think these two would look really great next to each other. Um, almost like kind of like a a sunset kind of feel, you know, with that nice peachy apricot shade and then the bright pink it just reminds me of a sunset so those are the two that I really want to have a go at growing I'm actually going to be sowing them this month the reason being I'm going to sow them and then have them outside so that they have that period of cold before before they have the the warmth I hope that's going to work this time um, I'm also going to be growing some echinacea two different well one different variety actually that was the wrong seed pack which is called Red in Shades. Um, I've really been wanting to grow these for a while and I just didn't do it because I just felt overwhelmed with all the seeds I was growing. But these are the ones that I'm going to grow, if that's something that you want to get. Red in Shades and it's Premier Seeds Direct as with the Fox Glove. And then I also want to grow some Asters, which is a peony mix. So I'm looking forward to having lots and lots and lots of flowers in the garden this year. Last year I didn't have as much as I would have liked. We've got Rudbeckia as well, which is beautiful. It gives such wonderful autumn colour. These flowered in my garden, I think right up until maybe the end of November. So it was nice to have that here. And this particular one was from... Where did I get this from? Oh, I got this from the range. So the seed pack is 49 pence from the range. All their seed packs packs of 49p so that's the Rudbeckia and the variety is called Marmalade. Uh, another variety of flowers that I'd like to grow, really really want to grow this year are Chamomile. Now these are from Premier Seeds and it's, let me just try and read that, Matricaria Rick Quita? I don't know. It's fine. I don't know. You can see it there. You can see it. You can write it down. Uh, the reason that I want to grow chamomile is because this year I want to make lots of chamomile tea. I invested in a dehydrator, which I'll show you hopefully in another video. And I'd love to grow chamomile and dry the flowers out and make some chamomile tea. I already made 
elderflower tea last year and it was absolutely beautiful. So this is the chamomile that I'd like to grow. Let me just write it down quickly. I also want to grow calendula this year. And these I got from Premier Seeds Direct. I've got so many from flowers from there. Um, now the reason why I'd like to grow calendula is because I really want to make calendula um, tea because it's really, really good for you. The only thing is I did struggle with dehydrating my calendula flowers. I felt that no matter how long I left them in the dehydrator, uh, oh, sorry, I just knocked the camera. No matter how long I left them in, they just didn't dry out completely. So I'm just wondering if the best thing for me to do is just to kind of have it as fresh tea and put the fresh flowers into the tea although it would be great to dry the flowers because obviously once the winter and stuff kicks in you know I can still I can still kind of have the tea but we'll see how it goes I do want to grow them I've got 700 seeds in this pack which is a really huge amount of seeds it's really great and then I also have saved seeds from last year yes definitely last year not this year because we're in 2022 and all I did was just pick pick the flower heads here um, and I'm going to be scattering those to grow them when it comes to calendula to grow them really all you need to do is scatter the seeds that's what I found works for me so these are all my saved seeds all I do is just put them into this tray this is like a mushroom tray I don't know if you can see it properly it's a mushroom tray and I keep all of these trays because they're really handy for collecting up seeds or you can put smaller plant pots in them, you know, when you're sowing your seeds so that you can water them, they can catch the water. It's really great for reusing, repurposing and just recycling things. Sorry, what the camera's wobbling. I'm sitting right next to it and I keep knocking it over. I'm not sure if you've heard of this particular variety of flower before and um, they are incredibly beautiful. They are called Bells of Island and they grow um, just, they're absolutely stunning. They're sort of green flowers and they look like bells basically like lime green bells and I had never tried them before. Last year I grew them and we, we had a little bit of germination but I think I didn't really sow them properly so this year is going to be uh, a second try for me. I did get a few and they were stunning until the chickens came and uh, you know destroyed them but you know we'll we'll kind of address that <laughs> this year and change a few things around. So Bells of Ireland I highly recommend as a beautiful beautiful flower to grow. I don't think I've put it down on my list here so I will I will note it down on my list and then the other gorgeous absolutely stunning flower i grew it for the first time last year 2021 and we did really well with it it's called amaranthus love lies bleeding there are a couple of varieties that you can get one that points upwards and these ones they cascade down and they are absolutely gorgeous just have a look on my instagram page and you will see them you'll see quite a few pictures of those particular flowers they're absolutely stunning they make wonderful cut flowers that you can add to a bouquet in a vase i mean they're just stunning i don't know what else to say about them just pop along on my instagram it's at the girl gardener and you can check these out i've, I've got two packs just because i you get a lot of seeds in them you get a thousand seeds here this is from thompson and morgan a thousand seeds in that one and i don't know how many you get in this one this one is here you go fifteen hundred and this is from Mr. Father Gills. So definitely, if you are looking to grow something different, try these out. Now, I think I'm going to need to get up to show you these next ones. And I hope I don't make you dizzy by moving the camera around too much. I have a tray full of hollyhock seeds. Now, I've picked all the buds. These are all saved seeds from the garden. Hope it focuses. There you go. And within each of these pods, you've just got a whole bunch of seeds in there that will come out there we go you can just see them inside the flower heads so I haven't taken them out of the flower heads just yet all I've done is collected them now I can't remember the variety of these it was um, I can't remember because I used to grow these in a pot before I had my garden when I still had a balcony and so I've still I'm kind of still growing them from there but they are an almost black variety of hollyhock 
and they're beautiful they grow ever so tall and all I've written down here is saved seeds I've still got that little nasturtium one that I need to pop back <laughs> once I've finished filming everything so I do encourage you to save as many seeds as you can from the garden because the more you save the less you actually need to buy I've also got an absolute bag load of marigolds now these are all the dried seeds i mean you can see here lots and lots and lots of seeds and i've also just you know just to save time picked some of the flowers and just popped them in to dry but each what well, each head basically contains lots and lots and lots and i don't remember the variety of them all i know is that the seeds that i bought were from places like wilco's lidl I think it was just Wilco's and Lidl, so these ones will be all orange. Hopefully, if I haven't mixed any of them up. They're nice and dry and ready to sow. And these ones are red and orange. And I, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter to keep them separate. I mean, marigold and marigolds. I don't know why I kept them separate, but anyway, here they are. You can see them all coming out. Look at that. Just absolutely packed full of seeds and I also have some more inside the house which are I think they have African marigolds as well and they grow very tall whereas these ones are short short bushy plants the other ones are a lot taller but they do grow less flowers and these ones have a lot more flowers so these are all my marigolds and again I've just put them down as saved seeds hopefully I won't need to grow any more marigolds <laughs> I won't need to buy any marigolds this year lastly are my sweet peas so I'm looking forward to growing sweet peas this year last year I grew a few different varieties from the range they're the same type of variety but just different colors so we've got royal white royal blue and royal pink they did very very well I picked them pretty much the whole season so there they are pay a visit to the range if you want to get some cheap and cheerful seeds i found they're very good they're very very good i can't really fault them so that's these ones and then some other varieties i'd like to oh sorry there's this one as well which is a mammoth mix and i did grow these as well but i didn't have much success with them i had more success with the range variety of seeds so i mean you can take a look at it anyway i don't know where it's from it's from ck I treated all my sweet peas the same, so ideally, I mean, it would have been nice if they just grew. Now, these ones are from Wilco's, and I don't know if you can see the colours properly on them, but the variety is called Beeline, and I just love the shades. Uh, it's a kind of like a mixed bag of pinks, purples, peaches, which again, it gave me that sunset vibe kind of feel to it so i really really i'm looking forward to trying these i treated myself to three packs and uh i don't know how many seeds are in each pack uh average 25 it says here so that's the variety you can write that down pay a visit to wilco's not sponsored <laughs> and these are gorgeous i can't wait to grow these and then the last variety of sweet peas that i've got are from thompson and morgan and it's called butterfly pea butterfly pea and i've got two packs of those and these are blue these are actually blue sweet now i know that this list probably just doesn't seem like much it probably just doesn't seem like i'm growing as many flowers as perhaps other people now this is going to be my third year of of growing and honestly I really don't want to overwhelm myself what I've done is I've taken things that I like you know I like foxgloves I like the echinacea I love zinnias you know and marigolds gave me so much joy last year you know it's been an up and down year I think for everybody you know to be fair with lots of different things going on and I found that whilst with the weather being as challenging as it was for example, I had an entire border that was filled with lobelia and petunias, which were shop bought. They were plug plants because I struggled to grow lobelias and petunias. And what happened was the heat wave came, two weeks of heat wave, and just cooked all the lobelia. 
and then the rain came and it just destroyed all the petunias because what it did was it, it just made holes in all of the petals and it just destroyed the whole border you know a lot of work goes into it you spend your money and then the weather just comes along and says no so i was really gutted because that border looked so beautiful and then what i did instead just to fill it up because that's the border that we see when we look outside the patio to the garden so I took lots of marigolds that were inside the greenhouse and dotted around and I basically just filled that whole border with marigolds and it just gave me a lot of joy so this year that's really what I want to focus on with with my growing in terms of flowers as I want to grow lots of marigolds they're very strong they coped with the heat they coped with the cold they coped with the wind I mean what's not what's not to like about it so my idea is not to grow lots and lots of different types of flowers but to grow these flowers in quantity so it fills up the space really really nicely we also had the slug problem as well so that was that <laughs> obviously i can address that problem when i get to it i usually find i don't use chemicals in my garden at all i've tried eggshells and various organic methods but it's just it's a tricky one when it comes to slugs i think but yeah, I hope that you did enjoy this video and that you can see the, the different types of flowers that I'd like to grow. If there's anything that you think I might like, pop it in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, do give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing too. That will really help me. And also join me on Instagram at the Girl Gardener so that you can see daily updates. And I hope that you have a very, very blessed and happy 2022. I hope it's a good one for all of us really because let's face it, the last two years i've been not so good but take care everyone and i'll see you next time bye bye matri matricaria requita matri matricaria matricaria requita